Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the Pennsylvania landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. At the Clark Law Firm, my focus, as always, is on landowner, property owner, royalty owner representation. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. They have enough lawyers on their side. We need some lawyers on our side working hard to protect the Pennsylvania property owner and royalty owner. I represent landowners, property owners, royalty owners for such items as, little lawyer speak, including but not limited to gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, gas lease breaches, gas lease termination issues. Hey, Tioga County, are you shut in by a single vertical well? And have you been shut in for years based solely on a single vertical well? like to hear from you, something where I'm investigating actively. And look, here's the thing. It's not right, my opinion. It's just not right. You didn't enter into an agreement in 2006, 7, 8 with thoughts that it would be 2018 and you would be held by a vertical well, which very well may be in what's called regulatory inactive status, and you're just sitting there getting shut-in payments year after year after year. That wasn't what you were told, I'd bet. That wasn't what you thought was going to happen, I bet. And that wasn't the intent of your agreement, I bet. But nonetheless, here we are, year after year after year, Sweppy sending you shut-in payments, and you're cashing them, and the lease is extending and extending. We need to do something about that. So if you're out there and you're shut in, especially by a vertical well, but even horizontal, and especially if you've been shut in for five years, six years or more, I really, really want to hear from you. I also would like to hear from you uh, before you cash the most recent check you get, but I want to hear from you, and I want to see if we can help you. I want to see if we can bring a claim for you, and I want to see if we can get these companies, in particular one out there in Tioga County, moving and producing gas or lose the lease renegotiate and enter into a fair lease and start producing. We need to do something about it. So if you're in that situation, you want to see if we can help you, I want to see if I can help you, give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. What I'm going to do is probably will request your copy of your lease. I'll look at it, investigate, and get back to you whether or not think we can bring a claim on your behalf. And I'm telling you, this is a priority in my office. We have to try to do something about this and stop this. This is especially true and happening in Tioga County with Sweppy, but it's happening elsewhere. But if you're in that situation and know someone who is, I want to hear from you. 570-307-0702. You're listening to All Things Marcellus, and make sure you join me each and every week. Doug Clark, right here at this time on this station for the radio show for you, the landowner. Again, I do not have not and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Lease reviews, modifications, amendments, representation on pipeline agreements. And you'll hear me say this often, I have reviewed, consulted on, negotiated, been involved in contracts with, I believe it's over 70 different pipeline companies across the state, which gives you an idea of the type of information and history and background that is available that we can work from to make sure that you and your case are doing the best you can. And I'm telling you, I want to smash my head off the wall when I hear, well, this is all we pay. The company says, well, this is all we pay. The line this week, well, this is the most we ever paid in Lycoming County. Well, that's fine, and that's good. We're glad to hear that. Whether it's true or not, who the heck knows, because it's real easy to say that. Oh, by the way, I just saw an elephant fly. 
Well, it's real easy to say that doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> I could say anything. Doesn't mean it's true. So I know there's, it's funny to me because I know in times where land guys, and look, no offense to them, they may not know, but say, oh, we've never paid that. We've never paid that. That's, we've never paid that high. When I know I've had a client with that same exact company that they paid a higher rate to. But you as a landowner, as you sit there, all you're hearing is what the company wants to present to you. Think about that. That the only source of information, if that's the case, if the only source of your information is somebody working for the company, comes from the company, from somebody who wants you to sign the document, that that is your source of information. And that person says, well, this is all we pay. That person says, this is the most we pay. That person says, well, they're not going to pay any more than that. And then you just, I guess, believe them. You believe them because that's what they've said to you. But you've never talked to or got information from somebody who's working for you, somebody who deals with these issues all the time from the landowner side who can tell you, hey, well, maybe they told you that's all they pay. Here, listen, secret. This is an alert that I am going to give you a secret from the company side. Pay attention, please. Turn up the radio. Write it down. Here is a secret that the companies do. Happens all the time. This is pipeline. They say, Mr. or Mrs. Landowner, for example, all we pay in compensation, all we pay is $15 a foot. That's all we pay. We're never paying more than $15 a foot. Loophole, as they exist all the time, and the purpose, what we need to do is identify the loopholes. We need to identify them and understand how they operate. So the company land that says, oh, $15, that's all this company pays. All they ever paid, all they ever will pay. Well, hey, you know, that sounds, what's a lawyer going to do? What's anyone else going to do? That's all they ever pay. Well, number one, is that indeed true? Number two, and then that's funny too, get them to write that down. Get them to write it down and ask them to sign it. See how that goes. But in any event, they're not going to do that. But here's the deal. Here's the secret. Here's the secret, guys. $15, that's the most we ever paid. I get a client. We say, hey, we need to do this. We're not going to sign for this. We're going to, we need more money. Company says, okay, but $15 is all we pay. Is <laughs> fine. Okay, whatever. Um, but the truth is, $15 may be all you pay on a per foot, what's called compensation basis. And here's the thing. There are two aspects to payments for pipelines, roadways, and these easement agreements. Two parts. One is compensation. Compensation, think of it as being how they buy that area of the property. They kind of buy the right to use it where they say, okay, we're going to buy a, say, 50-foot easement so we can put our pipelines there or a roadway, and we're going to use that. So we're purchasing the right to use that. But on that 50-foot area, let's say, and then they'll have an additional workspace area, but what they'll say is, hey, not only are we going to give you $15 to buy the right to put our pipeline there, we're also going to give you money for what's called damages, for any trees, crops, or even your yard, you know, whatever that thing may be, whatever that's on the property. But those two aspects of compensation, one being compensation, buying the 50 foot area to place the pipeline, not really forever, but you know, buying the right to do that. Then the second area of compensation is called damages payment paying for such items as commonly crops and timber, but really no one's out there checking. So you get damage payments and you may not have a bunch of timber. You may not have crops, but your property is still being damaged. It's being dug up. Pipelines are put in the ground, a roadway is installed, and then it's being reclaimed. So here's the big loophole guys. When you hear $15, that's all we pay. Well, that may, and I can't stress enough, may be true, may be true, but they're not talking to you about damages. Yes, maybe they pay only maybe 
$15 a foot for compensation. However, maybe they've paid somebody $15 a foot. Maybe they've paid them $50 a foot. Maybe they've paid people $100 a foot for damages, damages payment. So, little secret, actually big secret, big technique. If you ever have a pipeline agreement presented to you, I hope this thing kicks back, this show kicks back in your mind. If you have one presented to you now, this show better resonate with you, this segment. If you've already signed an agreement, this show should resonate because you've probably heard them say this to you, and now you know better if you're presented with something in the future. But common, 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 across the board, companies do it, not just one, they do it all the time. This is the most we pay. We're not going to pay anymore. This is the most we pay, $15 a foot. But they do pay more in damages, perhaps, and maybe they pay a whole, whole, whole lot more. So they can then continue to say to the next guy, the next lady, landowner, oh, $15 a foot is all we pay. No sense negotiating. We never pay anymore. But they don't tell you about the damages aspect, about the flexibility and the ability to negotiate the damages payment, which can be extremely substantial. And there are even times, guys, there are even times where companies will say, okay, and we're going to also, in order to get you more money, we can't let you get more than $15 a foot in compensation, but we'll give you another $100,000 in damages, damages. That's, what we'll, that's how we'll label it. And then we can still tell the next person that we're only paying $15 a foot and that's all we've ever paid. Very, very, very misleading. And it happens all the time. And so I was saying, sometimes they'll even create additional workspace. And they'll, they'll pay you for space that they know they're not going to use as a way to increase your payment. So how it works is, well, your offer is $30,000 for this pipeline. And that's at $15 a foot. And by the way, that's all we ever pay. Well... We say, okay, I'm not going to do this at $25,000. In order for me to do this, this would take $75,000. If you don't want to do it, if you don't want to do this company, you can go around me. I don't care. But if you want to go on my property, it's going to take $75,000. Well, all we ever pay is $15 a foot. Well, yeah, that's all you ever pay in compensation. Maybe, perhaps, but, and this is a big but, I'll bet you've paid more in damages. So again, I don't care if you say $15 a foot in compensation and $50 a foot in damages. I don't care how you do it, how you get there, but this is the number I need. And I'm telling you, that happens, and it happens a lot. I've been involved in it happening many, many, many times. And so the company will still go and say, well, all we ever pay is $15 a foot. Yeah, that may, I can't stress it enough, may be true. May, 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 may be true. $15 a foot is all they've paid in compensation. However, there's a darn good chance that they've paid a heck of a lot more, a heck of a lot more in damages. And if you don't know this and your lawyer doesn't know it, or if you don't know it and you're just dealing with them and they say to you, it's all we ever paid, that's all we ever paid, we don't negotiate this, we don't negotiate it, and then you just believe them. You believe them because you're just listening to the other side and you're not getting the information that you need. Then you sign an agreement, which you probably had the ability to completely negotiate or possibly decline and negotiate again for more money, better terms, better language, all of those different things. We need to stop just listening to the other side and telling us the information that they want us to hear. There are so many loopholes and so many techniques, and I see them all the time. And here's the broken record, and reviews and consultations are so valuable to the landowner and the client because I can identify what they do, what your situation is, what your leverage is, 
and explain these issues on an individual basis for your particular situation. And if you are not taking advantage of the review and consultation service, and it usually takes one to two hours, reviews and consultations, gas leases, amendments and modifications, pipeline agreements, roadway agreements, buying and selling gas rights, any type of an agreement, you, in my opinion, are making a very serious mistake because for a small investment of time and money, you can really understand your situation and we need to get that information out there. We really, really do. So give us a call, Attorney Doug Clark, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear from the people in Tioga County that are shut in by these vertical wells that are capped, especially shut in year after year after year. I wanna hear from you. We need to do something about this. We need to do something about this. This is garbage. We got to do something about it. We need to. I want to hear from you. Reviews, consultations, pipeline agreements, amendments, ratifications, and modification. I'm going to talk about that more in the next segment. 570-307-0702. And keep listening. Each and every week at this time on this station, join me, Attorney Doug Clark, for all things Marcellus. We're not stopping. In our eighth year, eighth year of all things Marcellus, and we are not stopping. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. And give us a call. Learn about representation, reviews, consultations, vertical well shut-ins in Tioga County. Lease, reviews, modifications, amendments, pipeline agreements. Call, call, call. 570-307-0702. Things are picking up and people are being taken advantage of and we got to stop it. We got to stop it. I've been talking a lot recently on amendments, lease amendments and modifications and ratifications. This is something that I'm dealing with each and every week. All the time, companies are coming to people and presenting them with lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications, meaning they are requesting that you amend and modify or change your existing lease, and you also ratify it, meaning that you're saying, oh yeah, this lease is still in effect. If you are giving a lease amendment, modification or ratification or combination of all three. I'm going to say it. Call 570-307-0702. Get a review and consultation. One to two hours typically. Do it, do it, do it. And here's why. I've been talking about it. There are so many different reasons. The number one reason is, the number one reason is, is that when you're getting a lease review amendment and ratification, especially if your lease is a little older, and when I'm, I'm talking about before 2005, your lease may have already terminated, meaning that you could negotiate a new lease for a heck of a lot more money than what you're being paid, if anything, to sign an amendment modification and ratification let me i need to make this so clear literally your lease may have terminated meaning there is no lease but if you ratify it and bring it back to life and simultaneously you amend it and modify it to give the company language that they need you may be bringing your back, back your lease to life or now providing a lease that the company can develop under that they couldn't have developed under before. You may say, well, okay, well, that's good. I want them to develop. Yeah, but at the same time, if they have no lease or they have a lease that they effectively cannot develop under, well, they're going to want your property too if you're in a gas producing area. They're coming to you and offering you an amendment, modification, and ratification. So they want your property. Well, 
you should not be ratifying and bringing back to life a lease that is terminated. You should be negotiating a new lease. And sometimes this new lease may be three, four, five thousand dollars an acre, depending upon where you are. So you could be signing a ratification and canceling out payments of thousands of dollars per acre in bonus payments because you just simply signed a ratification. Oh, and guess what? Don't expect the company employee or the company contractor or the person working or being paid by the company to tell you, hey, landowner, by the way, your old lease is actually terminated. And by signing this, you'll bring that thing back to life. And by agreeing to these other terms that we're asking for, you'll give us the ability to develop under your old lease and we won't have to pay you any more money and we'll get to continue to pay you or we'll pay you at 12 and a half percent royalty. Oh, and we'll take full deductions. Oh, and by the way, maybe we'll sell the gas to ourselves at the well site and pay you royalty on the price that we pay ourselves as an affiliated company at the well. Yeah. Do you think they're going to tell you that? Well, I don't know. I haven't, haven't talked to anyone yet that told me that that's what they were told. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. If you have amendment, ratification, pipeline agreement, gas lease, you name it, give us a call, learn what I do, see if we can help you, 570-307-0702. Regardless of your location, I have clients all across Pennsylvania, have represented clients all across Pennsylvania, people all across the country who have property or gas rights in Pennsylvania, and literally people who live in other countries. And regardless of the size, I have many clients that I've represented that have less than an acre, and I have clients I've represented that have 1,000-plus acres. So give us a call. See if we can help you. See if I can help you. And if I'm right for you, wonderful. I want to talk to you. I want to do review and consultation. I want to educate you. I want you to be informed, and I want you to make the right decision. The other thing, you know, our clients, my clients sign agreements all the time. We just sign better agreements because we negotiate them and we sign more informed agreements or the landowner is more informed and understands the agreements. And what are the loopholes? What can we close? What can't we close? And if we can't close the loophole, we're aware of it and we weigh that in in a decision to decide whether to sign or not. And that's what you want to do because Pennsylvania is full, filled with thousands of people who made uninformed decisions who didn't have the knowledge, who are pr plenty smart, but just didn't have the information or knowledge. Or the only information and knowledge they have was from the company who had paperwork and pen in hand, and that's who you're listening to. Well, hopefully we've learned from that. Hopefully we've learned from that, and we're not going to keep doing that. And although I know it does still keep happening, hopefully, hopefully people are listening to the radio show and say, hey, I'm going to call that guy, do a review and consultation before I agree or sign to anything, and then get an idea and understand what my rights are, what my leverage is, and make the best decision for me. And I hope you do it. 570-307-0702. Attorney Doug Clark, all things Marcellus. And remember also, if you don't call me, and I'm telling you, I truly mean this. I truly, truly mean it. If you don't call me, please call someone who will work for you, who knows what they're doing. Now, please know, I'd love for you to call me, but call someone if you don't call me. But do not just sit there listening to the other side and make decisions on generally for most people, the largest asset that they own that will affect them their children, and the property for probably generations, generations, grandchildren, even great-grandchildren. We need to make sure that we're making the best decisions for us, for our families, and for our property. And how do you do that? By getting information for you and your situation. And that's how you'll make the best decision. And it may be signing. It may not be signing. It may be hurry up and sign. It may be, hey, let's wait and watch how this market develops. But make an informed decision. Too many people are not doing it. And listen, if they tell you that is all we pay, we're never going to pay that. Again, how about I tell you this? I just saw an elephant fly 
on the way to the radio show this morning. I was driving, and there was a parade of elephants, giraffes, hippopotamus. And I saw all of them. Actually, I saw the elephant fly, then the giraffe, and the hippopotamus. It kept trying. It jumped up. It went about 10 feet in the air, and then it fell down. That stuff is easy to say. You can say crazy stuff, and you can say, that's all we pay. We'll never, they'll never agree to that. Well, if you don't test it, if you don't push it, if you don't talk to somebody that's gone down that road before, probably many times, well, whatever you're told may make sense. So it's real easy to say virtually anything, but the truth is what the truth is. And to say, well, all we pay is $15 a foot. Well, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. But if it is true, it's probably true only towards compensation. And they actually pay a lot more or they have paid a lot more or maybe they've paid a lot more for damages. So they have a loophole that they're not explaining to you. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Multi-unit well consents. Um, hey, I'd like to think maybe, yeah, you know, it's probably thinking too much. Maybe we had something to do with it. Uh, Chesapeake used to present, or they were presenting the people, these what are called production allocation agreements. Did a radio show, blistered it explained all the different problems to it and i think not just because of the radio show i'd like to think it was a factor chesapeake it appears now is now sending out what are called multi-unit well consents instead of the production allocation agreements why because people were smart people got smart and said you know what we're not going to sign this production allocation agreement it's not good for us. There are all kinds of problems with this document. We've gone to Doug Clark, maybe other lawyers. We've listened to the radio show. Or we just read this document and it's so bad that we've decided we're not going to sign it. So what does Chesapeake do? They go back to the drawing board and say, well, maybe we tried to bite off a little too much. Let's present a different style of document and see how that goes. Same type of thing. You better get it reviewed. You better do a review and consultation. You're offered a multi-unit well consent, a production allocation agreement. You better get it reviewed. You better understand it. And you better try to amend and modify or edit that document. And you probably can. But you got to get specific advice and find out what you can do. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can reach out 570-307-0702. And as always, remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. So, all right, I'm gonna, you know, I planned on talking about this all day today, and I get sidetracked because I'm so tired of hearing, though, this is all we pay stuff and people just buying into it. So, okay, amendment modification and ratification. I'm telling you, stay with me because I have seen hundreds of these. They happen all the time. They can be to amend the size of the unit. They can be all types of different amendments. But here's the key. If you are given an amendment, modification, and ratification, get help. Don't just sign because there's a reason that you're given that document. And sometimes the reason literally can be because your old lease is actually terminated and doesn't exist. Or your old lease hasn't terminated yet, but it will. And it will terminate. For example, some older leases require constant production. And the company is not going to be able to develop your property and keep the old lease alive with constant production. Maybe they have to shut that well in, but there's reasons that they can't keep your old lease alive. So you may have an old lease that still is alive today, but will be dying or expiring or terminating before the company can develop it. So they come to you with an amendment and modification and probably a ratification. But again, your lease actually may have terminated. And I've seen this now multiple times, and I've seen it recently multiple times, especially older leases. So 
when we get back from this break, I'm going to give you a real example from a gas lease that was in the 1900s and actually fairly far back in the 1900s. But and I stress this, this could be in 2003, 2004, 1990, any time, but this one's an older one. And I'm going to explain how a company will look to revive or bring back and preserve an old lease and what you need to watch out for. And I'm going to do that after this super important message. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for the information you need regarding natural gas development. And as always, remember, I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. So I've been talking a lot about amendments, modifications, and ratifications, and rightfully so. If you receive a lease a request to amend, modify, or ratify your existing gas lease, you better be putting down the pen and getting some assistance. So I'm reviewing this lease from the roughly, well, I'll say the early 1900s, and I'm going through, I'm doing a review and consultation. These are great, again, this is a great example of the service and how it can benefit someone. So in looking at this older lease, I identify some areas where I see is problems and I'm taking my notes and I'm highlighting and I'm saying, oh, okay, this is an interesting discovery. This lease doesn't have this. Here's a problem. I don't know how they're ever going to operate under this lease because here's a problem. Here's a problem. And it looks like that maybe this lease is, well, it looks like it's probably actually terminated because let's say, for example, that there wasn't constant production. So I'm going to now kind of go a little bit hypothetical, but we'll say based on a true story. So go through the lease and I identify some areas. I say, you know what? This lease is before the passage of what's called the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act. So the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act in Pennsylvania set the royalty rate at a minimum of 12.5%. Now, you'll hear a lot of talk about legislation and trying to change and make the 12 and a half percent be royalty without deduction. Maybe it makes the 12 and a half percent. Maybe some legislation wants to increase it to 15, but there's talk about trying to modify or change this guaranteed minimum royalty act of 12 and a half percent being the minimum royalty that a landowner can receive. You're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark. So this lease was generated and entered into before the passage of the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act. So this lease does not comply with the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act. But when the act kicks in, now there's a guaranteed minimum royalty of 12.5%. Now there's some confusion. You know, what, what does that mean exactly? Or there could be some debate as to what that means. A company will certainly point to a case called the Kilmer case and say that 12.5% means 12.5% royalty at the wellhead. However, we don't know. Does 12.5% mean that the company can sell it to itself at the wellhead and then pay you on this non-arm's length transaction, which could result in less royalty and potentially significantly less royalty to you? Well, that's a question that's probably not answered. So what does the company do? They come to a person and say, hey, we would like to sign, have you sign this amendment and modification of your gas lease because it was originally entered into before the passage of the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act. And we would like to document that we're going to give you, of course, 12.5% royalty. But it doesn't get into, we're going to charge you deductions, we're going to be able to sell the gas to ourselves as an affiliate and either pay you that price, which may be a much lower price than the market, or maybe we'll sell it to ourselves and use an index price. But they come to you with 12.5% royalty, but how is it calculated? And you better look at that. And maybe there's something that you can do about that. So those are things that need to be looked at. 
and you're, you may be signing a new royalty provision, it's going to result in you getting less royalty and potentially substantially less royalty. And if you didn't sign it and you weren't required to sign it, well, you're probably going to make more money in this example. But you have to look at your situation, the original language in your lease and what is being proposed to you as an amendment and modification. And I haven't seen, I, don't, I can't recall any amendments and modifications that said, hey, we're going to give you a better royalty percentage with the same royalty calculation. And sometimes you'll get a better royalty percentage, the old, you know, bait and switch. Oh, hey, we're going to increase your royalty to 13 and a half percent. Yeah, because we're nice guys. And so here it is. But they don't tell you, oh, by the way, we're going to give you 13 and a half percent, but we're going to calculate your royalties in a whole different way. And you'd even if you had 18 percent, you're going to lose out with this new royalty calculation method that you're now agreeing to. Don't get distracted by shiny objects. Don't get distracted by dollar signs that the landman is talking to you about. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted by promises of future riches. Don't get distracted by an increase in your royalty percentage. Don't get distracted. Pay attention to the royalty calculation language. Don't get distracted by shiny objects and the more the person in front of you is talking about something that's over there that's not on the paper something about all oh, money in the future you're going to be rich in the future don't worry about this this is so we can make you rich don't get distracted and it's happening all the time you're listening to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark join me each and every week at this time on this station so, amendment, ratification, and modification. Bat resetting a second. So, I'm reviewing this old lease from the 1900s, and I see that it didn't have the royalty provision, um, which met the Guaranteed Minimum Royalty Act. So, as I continue to go through, I see that it does not give the company the ability or the authority to pull or unitize this property with other properties. In this case, that is a fatal problem for production under this lease, in my opinion. So I go through further and I see, wow, this lease requires constant production, meaning that they cannot shut in wells. And this is the thing. A lot of these older leases never contemplated horizontally drilling or horizontal drilling. So the company needs to amend and modify. And this can be a tremendous opportunity for you. Also, I can't say this a lot enough, these older leases, in my opinion, many have terminated, but people are signing amendments, modifications, and ratifications and bringing terminated leases to life and never knowing that they had the right to have their lease terminated and negotiate a whole new lease. If you have an older lease, you have to do that. You have to look and at least do a review and consultation to understand your rights. Because if you have 100 acres and the market in your area is $3,000 an acre, you might have just given up $300,000. And you might have given up an increase of royalty from 12 and a half to 16, 15, or 18%. Because the company lamb said, oh, we, we, need to, you know, we need to get you to sign this so we can make you rich. We got to stop doing that. So I go through the lease. I say, wow, this has a royalty issue potentially. You can't pull or unitize this property with others. That's a major issue. And it doesn't allow the well or wells to be shut in. And this is an old lease. So over the last, let's say, 50 to 100 years, 50 to 75, however old this lease is, or the last 15 or 20 years, did the company ever shut in the well? And if they did, they, there's a good chance they violated that lease and that lease terminated at the time it was shut in because there wasn't constant production. So as we go through then, I say, okay, well, let's see what the company is requesting as an amendment and modification and ratification. Well, to no surprise, to no surprise, 
the company then in a case like this requests or in this you know in this case requests an amendment modification and ratification and what do they want to do well here you go number one they want to change they want to add amend and modify your lease to add a royalty provision a of course one eighth royalty provision which then allows for complete and total deductions and it may allow for affiliated sales and a very poor royalty calculation method for this person for this lease so right there is a problem that we need to identify and see what we can do to address then what does the company want to also amend and modify well paragraph number two they want to amend and modify to add to add, modify and amend your lease to add a pooling and unitization provision. Why do they want to do that? Because they can't develop under this lease if they don't have it, which would give you some leverage, you would think, to negotiate for an amendment and modification or possibly an entirely new lease. Because why do I say that? Well, the third thing that they want to amend and modify, and in these cases, they're not asking to delete something and substitute something else. They're just looking to add these terms because they don't exist now. They don't exist now. So if you see an amendment and modification and ratification that has a pooling and unitization clause, that that's what they want to add, or they want to add a shut-in clause, red flags should be flying up everywhere we need sirens we need alarms if you are being asked to amend and modify your lease to include a shut-in a pooling and unitization provision provision wow you better be calling 570-307-0702 find out what that means for you this is a big 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 deal big deal and this goes on I'm going to keep going. Well, actually, you know what? It's a good break. This is a good time to break because there's more to this. And this is going to get into the ratification part. And the ratification part, remember we say that in this example, this older lease may have already terminated. May have already terminated. So what do they want to do? Companies are smart, but we need to be smart too. And I'm going to tell you what they do. I'm going to read some of this, some more of this, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to read some of this verbatim because it's fascinating and it should be extremely telling to you what occurs and why we need to have these documents reviewed before you sign so you understand. Maybe my lease terminated. Maybe I can negotiate this. Here's a quick you know, war story, if you will. Just This is this week. I mean, this is happening now. Um, amendment modification uh, client would do review and consultation, explain all the problems. Company has an offer. They come back and they say that that's all they're going to pay. Then they come back and they double what they told us was all they were going to pay. Then we say no. The client says no. They come back and they double that again. And that's all they'll pay. So we got three, I think three all will ever pays. And then they pay more. They offer to pay more. Um, you know, I wonder if we set out there in areas where landmen and company are super active. We set in the countryside. We might hear just echoes of woof, woof, woof. These guys cry woof all the time. We need to try to make sure that we understand what's true when they say it, what your options are. And a great way, like I said, is reviews, consultations, learn your rights, learn your options, Give us a call, 570-307-0702. When I get back, I'm going to finish this amendment and ratification. And stay tuned. I'm telling you, this is amazing stuff, and we need to be prepared and defend against it. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Going to jump right into it, have a short show but or a short segment. But real quick, if you miss any of today's show, really encourage you, go back to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com pipelineattorney.com. Today's show will be up and available tomorrow. Many, many other hours of radio available. pagasleaseattorney.com. 
pipelineattorney.com. If you're not going to those sites, what are you doing? Get to the sites, get some good information, and then listen to the show each and every week at this time on this station. And if you're looking for specific advice, reviews, consultations, breach of leases, royalty issues, unitization, pipelines, so on, so on, multi-unit well consents, vertical well shut in, Tioga County, Sweppy, 570, give us a call, 570-307-0702, see if we can help you. All right, amendment, modification, ratification. Classic type of an example. Client sends in their lease, they're offered amendment, modification, ratification. I look at the old lease, I look at the amendment, modification, and ratification. So when I'm doing that, I look at the old lease, I say, wow, here's an issue, here's an issue, here's an issue. Three major issues in the old lease. Didn't have a guaranteed royalty provision. Didn't have unitization and pooling, which was a major obstacle for the company. And also did not allow wells to be shut in, which meant that if the lease had not already terminated because wells were shut in in violation of the lease, this lease would terminate because the company was going to have to shut in these wells to actually drill either on this property or close to it. So... We identify a lease that may have already terminated, in some cases would have terminated because we can establish it was shut in without authority, or we know that it will have to be shut in in the future. So we understand our leverage. We understand that this lease, depending upon the facts of the case, actually may have terminated. And we get a plan together and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. But one thing we're sure as heck not going to do is just go sign an amendment, modification, and ratification. So let's say in this case that we can prove that the wells have been shut in or the existing well was shut in and therefore this lease would have expired. So what does the company do in that case? Well, in all cases, here's some additional language in the amendment and ratification of oil and gas lease that they sent to this person. So to quickly reset, they added a royalty provision because they wanted to and they wanted to have certain royalty calculations. So they add that to the amendment. They want to amend and add a pooling and unitization clause because they need it, not because you do, because they do. Uh, they want to add a shut-in provision because they want to shut in the well. We don't want well shut in. So, again, this isn't specific advice. There's other factors to consider with all of this. But they know they have problems, and they want to address the three problems they have, and they don't want to pay any money. Then we go into the next provision, and this says the ratification of remaining lease provisions. So this statement, so this is what you're agreeing to also. So you have an older lease that doesn't have pooling, doesn't have unitization, doesn't have shut in. And in our case, we're going to say that these wells are a well that was, that was on the property that was holding the lease had been shut in. Let's use that as an example. Well, this lease says that the company and the landowner hereby ratify and agree that the lease, meaning the existing lease, is valid and in effect. So now you would be signing that. You're signing that to say that the existing lease or the older lease that in our example has been shut in, the well that was producing the held this lease was shut in. It wasn't constantly producing gas, so it would have terminated in our opinion. But by signing this, you are saying that you ratify and agree that that old lease is valid and in effect. And then number two, it says that you're agreeing that the company is not in violation of any terms or provisions of the older lease, including any royalty or rental payments there in terms thereof, including any royalty or rental payment terms thereof. So you're now agreeing that the company is not in violation of the lease, including the royalty and rental payment terms. That should be red flags, guys. That should be red flags. Then it goes on and says that you ratify and affirm all of the terms and provisions of the lease to the extent that they are not changed, altered, or amended in this agreement. So again, this is why I talk about this so much. This lease, this in our example, let's say the lease was shut in inappropriately and the lease would have terminated, that the lease language terminates the lease if it's shut in. But you're agreeing now to add a shut-in clause. You're agreeing in an amendment modification ratification to add the shut-in clause that the company needs. And the lease, in my example, has terminated 
but you're agreeing to add that clause and you are agreeing to ratify and agree that the old lease that they shut the well in, in my example, in violation of the lease, you're agreeing that that old lease is valid and in effect. You're also agreeing that the company is not in violation of any terms or provisions of the lease. You're agreeing to that, including, you're agreeing as of this date, including that they're not in violation of any royalty or rental payment terms. Why do they want that? Because they very well may have violated those. That's why. And your lease may have actually terminated, but you're going to sign this because they're going to say, oh, we're going to make you rich. Here, we need you to sign this. And then you, again, ratify in the terms, all the terms and provisions of the lease. We have to have to stop signing these amendments and ratifications. If you're given a ratification, that needs to send flags up. You need to call. Call me, 570-307-0702. This is a major area where people are being, in my opinion, taken advantage of, not being compensated, reviving terminated leases, and stuck under 12.5% royalty with no more bonus, a super small payment, something like that. We got to stop that. We have to stop it. My opinion, people are missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have to stop it. Start with the review and consultation. Call the office, 570-307-0702. But get this information. Here's another um, term that's in this document, which I think is funny. And I, when I say funny, I mean... It's not funny. I just say that so I can continue to maintain because it drives me out of my mind. Another term is the expiration, termination, and abandonment. It says, and this this is the ratification I'm reading from, that this lease shall not be presumed abandoned, forfeited, terminated, expired, or otherwise lost unless a release of the lease is executed and recorded by the company. Wow. So you're now agreeing. Like, why would anyone ever agree to that? Why would anyone agree to it? Let me tell you, they wouldn't agree to it. Nobody would agree to it if they understood it and if they had a, a choice not to agree to it. But if you understand it, you say, why in the world would I agree to that? Let me tell you, that's not language that's typically in leases. But it's offered here in a ratification. And why is that? Because, let's use my example, because the lease probably terminated or did terminate. And they now want to have extra evidence in the event that you ever tried to contest this and say, oh, my lease terminated. They're going to have additional agreement first that you've ratified and agreed that you know it still was valid in effect, which is a very big problem. But then it also says that you agree that the lease shall, shall not be presumed terminated unless the company files a release. So again, it just gives them more of a defense and gives you more problems. We got to stop this. We have to stop it. Lease amendments, modifications, ratifications. Those have to send red flags, signs, call, get a review and consultation. All right, we're up against it as always. Make sure you join me, Attorney Doug Clark, each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. We need to stop signing bad agreements. We need to do reviews and consultations. 570-307-0702. Keep listening to the show. Stop signing bad agreements. The landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. Have a great week, everyone.